It's so simple, but it's so good. I'm Mark Matsumoto and welcome to my Tokyo kitchen. Today I want to show you how to make salmon onigiri, which are sometimes called rice balls in English, even though they're not round. Anyway, we'll start by making Japanese salted salmon, and then I'll show you an easy way to cook and flake it before making two styles of onigiri. So let's start with a look at our ingredients. I've got around 200 grams of salmon, and I like using salmon with a good amount of fat on it so it doesn't dry out when we cook it. We're gonna cure these with 5 grams of sea salt, and then I'm gonna steam it with 2 tablespoons of sake. For the onigiri, we need 2 rice cooker cups worth of cooked Japanese short grain rice, and I've got a video explaining how to make it and why it's important to use short grain rice for onigiri, and I'll link to that in the description. You're also going to need a few sheets of good quality nori. This isn't sponsored, but I'm really digging numata nori right now, and you can google them to order it online. To cure the salmon, I'm going to start by laying down a double layer of paper towels onto a tray that's going to absorb the liquid that will come out of the salmon. Then I'm going to place our salmon fillets onto the tray. Now we want to sprinkle all of the salt evenly across the surface of the salmon. This may seem like a lot of salt, but not all of it is going to soak into the fish and it'll help preserve it while allowing the salmon flakes to season the rice. By the way, I'm using a type of sea salt called mojio that's infused with seaweed. It's loaded with umami and it's gonna impart this onto the salmon. I'm using ginzake or koho salmon today because it's loaded with fat at this time of year and I love the vibrant hue, but other types of salmon will work fine. Now we just have to cover this and refrigerate it overnight to cure. The next day, your salmon should be noticeably firmer, so we're ready to cook these up. I'm gonna place the salmon skin side down into a cold pan. The skin helps to protect the fish from the hot pan so it doesn't get dry. Then I'm gonna pour the sake into the pan. We're gonna cover this up with the lid and turn the stove on to medium-high heat to bring the sake to a boil. Salted salmon is traditionally grilled, but I prefer steaming it because it cooks the salmon through more evenly, ensuring it's tender and fluffy all the way through. Using sake has the benefit of infusing the salmon with extra flavor and umami, but if you can't find it, water will work too. Okay, this is at a rolling boil, so I'm going to turn down the heat to maintain a gentle simmer, and I'm going to set the timer for 3 minutes. While we wait for the salmon to cook, I want to take a moment to thank all of you for supporting my channel by watching and liking my videos. If you've learned something new from this recipe and you want to do something more, head over to MarksRecipes.com where you can subscribe to my secret stash of original recipes. You'll find some other great bento items like my ham and cheese tamagoyaki that's loaded with herbs, or my vibrant shredded carrot and tuna salad and your membership helps to support this channel. All right, let's go check on our salmon. Our timer's up, so let's open this up. Wow, I wish you could smell this, but right now we don't want our salmon to overcook, so let's transfer this out of the pan and onto a clean prep surface to cool enough to handle. To make our salmon flakes, I'm gonna start by removing the skin. Then I'm going to remove the pin bones along the center of the salmon. You should be able to feel them by running your finger along the top surface, but be sure to check the sides as well. Now I'm going to roughly flake this up using my fingers. This is also a good chance to double check that you haven't left any bones in the salmon. Once you've got all the salmon flaked, you can go back in and mash up the flakes into smaller flakes using the tips of your fingers like this. How finely you flake the salmon is up to you, but I want it to still have some texture, so I'm gonna stop around here. To shape the onigiri, I like using a sheet of plastic wrap because it keeps the rice from sticking to your fingers without having to use water, which can make the rice mushy. Just lay a sheet of the wrap in front of you, and then we're gonna sprinkle some salt onto the surface of the wrap. 
Then I'm gonna add a mound of hot rice to the center of the wrap. Now I'm gonna make a little well in the center of the rice with a spoon and fill it with a generous amount of flaked salmon. Next, I'm gonna mound on some more rice to cover up the salmon and you shouldn't need quite as much rice for this. Then I'm gonna sprinkle on some more salt to season the top and it's time to wrap this up into a bundle. You want to make the bundle triangular in shape, so bring the bottom edge of the wrap up and then you want to fold the two top corners down while shaping the rice into a rough triangle. Once you're happy with the rough shape, it's time to nigiri, which means to clasp with your hands. We want to shape one hand into a valley and the other hand into a mountain like this. We're gonna set the onigiri into the valley and then I'm gonna use the other hand to gently press the rice together into the shape of a mountain. Keep tossing the onigiri while gently shaping it until the rice sticks together enough so that it won't fall apart. This is the hallmark of really great onigiri and you need to compress the rice just enough to hold its shape but you still want it to be relatively light and fluffy. Okay, this is looking great, so I'm gonna set this aside and let's move on to our next style of onigiri. Just add a generous amount of the salmon flakes to some hot rice, and then you wanna fold it into the rice until it's evenly distributed. Be careful here not to mash the individual grains of rice. Now let's turn this into an onigiri. Since our salmon's evenly mixed with the rice, I'm gonna sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds onto the plastic wrap instead of salt for this one. Then I'm gonna add a generous mound of salmon rice into the center of the wrap. Since we're not filling this one, add your full portion of rice here. Then I'm gonna sprinkle on some more toasted sesame seeds on top and wrap this up like the last one. Once you've got your triangle shape, it's time to nigiri. There's something super satisfying about this that reminds me of my childhood. Okay, this is looking good, so let's set this aside and prepare our nori. How you cut it up is gonna depend on how big your onigiri are, but for these I'm gonna cut the sheet of nori into three strips using a sharp knife. Then I'm gonna make sure I have the smooth surface of nori facing outward and wrap it around the back side of the onigiri. Pull the sides of the nori around to the front of the onigiri and then secure it in place by gently pressing it into the rice. Okay, this is ready to eat, but let's see how it looks in the center. Beautiful, isn't it? By the way, if you want to be a little extra, onigiri are delicious topped with some ikura and I'll include a link to my homemade ikura recipe in the description below. All right, let's try this out while the nori is still crispy. Itadakimasu. Ah, can you hear that? <laughs> the rice is sweet and fluffy with a nice salty layer on the outside. And when you get into the filling, that salmon is moist and tender and loaded with umami. And that nori wrapper not only makes it easy to hold, it's also super crispy, which is why I like to wrap my onigiri just before you eat it. All right, let's try this other one here with the sesame seeds and the salmon mixed into the rice. I'm gonna go in with chopsticks because I don't want it sticking to my fingers. The rice is still sweet and light and fluffy, but having that salmon mixed in adds umami and the savory flavor in every bite. And you've got those little poppy bits of sesame seed and they're adding some wonderful nutty flavor. Onigiri will remind any Japanese person of their mom's home cooking, so I hope you'll give this a try. Well, I've got some orchids to repot, but check out this playlist for more bento-friendly recipes. And I'll catch you in the next one.